Microsoft Teams has just adopted the same calendar with an Outlook, bringing you a unified experience across both apps. And these are seven tips so that you can optimize your new calendar. So let's nerd out. Here we are within Microsoft Teams and to access this new calendar, we can go up to the top right and toggle the new calendar on. Next, we are going to take a look at how we can create a custom experience using these views and filters from the top. By selecting this week drop down here, we have some default views. And for this day, I find it really cool how if we hover over this little carrot icon, then we can actually adjust how many days we want to view. So rather than sticking to a whole week, we could, for example, view the next three days. Moving along, we have the work week. And for myself, you can see that I already have this defined as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So these are the days that I have set within my calendar that I will be in the office. And if we go up to the ellipses here, then we can go calendar settings. And then from the bottom, we have work hours and location. So by default, this will be a Monday through Friday, but you can customize it based on your own specific work schedule and define times as well as locations for those areas. Moving along, we also can toggle between the different days, weeks, or months by using these toggles on the top left. And one thing that I find particularly helpful is this drop down here allowing you to jump to different dates that are quite far ahead within your calendar. And if you need to get back to today, then we can simply click today. Moving along, the next view that we have is the week view. And so you will notice that mine starts on Monday, but we can customize this. So if we go up to the ellipses on the top right, go calendar settings, then on this first page, we have calendar appearance. And the first thing is show the first day of the week as. So mine is toggle to Monday, but if you would prefer to have a Sunday start, for example, then you can select that. Next, we have this time scale. And by default, it is 30 minutes. And that means that you have these little blocks for the first 30 minutes in the hour and the second 30 minutes within the hour. But you can update this as well. So if you wanted to do 15 minute intervals, for example, or even make it 60 minutes. And you'll notice that when we have 60 minutes selected, then there will be the least amount of space for details in your calendar. But if we save this, close out of here, then you will see that it shows you a nice condensed hourly view of your work week. There are some additional options here, but we will cover those in just a second. Now, there's one little setting that I want to show you before we move on to filters and that is this little weather icon. So what it does is it will show you the weather for your location in the next five days, which when I worked in downtown Vancouver, I would often meet friends, go for coffees and go for walks. But in Vancouver, it rains a lot. So we try and pick our days based on the weather. So by adding this little icon to your calendar, then you can easily schedule events like this in advance. So to add the weather, we can go up to the ellipses, go calendar settings, and then weather. Now it's super easy. You simply toggle show weather on, and then you add your location. Moving along to the filters, this allows us to clear some of the clutter out of our calendar and focus on important items. So if we select the drop down here, then these top two, we have appointments and meetings. So if we toggle off meetings, then we will see that we just have this deep work here and then this other event within my calendar. So your appointments are your private events within your calendar. They are not shared with anybody else. And if you have any recurring time blocks set aside to complete specific tasks, for example, deep work, then those will show up under your appointments. Whereas in contrast, if we toggle on our meetings, then these are going to be meetings that are associated with other team members or teams within Microsoft. And the great thing here is that we even have some additional options for these meetings. And one that I find particularly helpful is this followed. So when we are invited to a Teams meeting, if we aren't able to attend the meeting, 
you can actually decline the invite, but still follow the meeting so that you can access those meeting details at a later date. So in that case, you would unselect all of these filters and then only search for the followed meetings. I don't have any here, but you understand. So we will just add all of these back in. Now, another thing that I find super helpful here is the categories. So we saw earlier that I have these appointments and I've categorized those as deep work. I've categorized this personal event as learning. And then I've also categorized this meeting here as a high priority client. So if you wanted to also add categories to your meetings, then you could, for example, a quick pause in today's video to let you know that I have just released my free ebook, Navigating Microsoft Passages. It includes a treasure map as well as nerdy tips so that you can learn how to navigate Microsoft 365 apps with confidence. I will include a link in the description below for you to download your copy today. You know, easily get a monthly view of which priority clients you would be meeting within that month. Now, if you wanted to learn how you can categorize your meetings, then we can expand this event, open it up, and then at the top here, we have categories. So I've also covered categories in a video that I've recently done on planner versus to do is we can also categorize our tasks. And I will include a link to that at the end of this video. Now, the last one that I find super helpful here is this in person meeting. So, so many meetings today are on our computers. So if you actually need to attend an in person meeting, then you're going to need to prepare for that and make sure that you attend that meeting on time. So similar to those categories, we can toggle on requested for an in-person meeting, and then you'll be able to view, you know, all of your meetings within that time frame that are going to be in person and with those high priority clients. Now, continuing on with our example of viewing our in-person meetings for our high priority clients, then we can select the drop down. We can change this view to month. And then at the bottom here, we can go down to saved views. You can go save current view. You can give it a name and then save it. And then that will allow you to easily access that view from this drop down here. And before we move on, I just wanted to add that when we are in this monthly view, on the bottom right here, there is a little button where we can expand our view and view the day within detail. So this allows you to get a snapshot of what's happening that day while still getting the bird eye view of a monthly calendar. Moving along, we have some additional settings. So you can easily print your calendar if you like to have a physical piece of paper of your agenda, or you can go to those calendar settings and there's a whole bunch of other things that we didn't cover, but I did show you some key details. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is the ability to share your calendar. So you'll notice at the bottom here that inside your organization, people in my organization can see when I'm busy. Now, this is something that's associated with the scheduling assistant when you go to create a meeting with your team members. And we'll dive into that in a little bit. But for right now, I want to give Mike access to my calendar. So I'm going to add Mike. And then here we have some different options on what pieces of information I want to share with him in my calendar. So you'll see at the bottom here that we can just delegate my whole calendar. So this would be if you have an assistant that you just want full access to schedule and manage all of your events or view when you're busy, which is already down here, so you shouldn't really select that. But view titles and locations, you know, I think that's a really good start. So at least Mike will be able to see, you know, when I have my meetings and where they are being held. So if we go and share my calendar with Mike, then we can take a look at that. Now, when you share your calendar with somebody on your team, then they will receive an email that looks something like this. So if we go and add this to our calendar, then we can now view our calendar. So within Mike's Outlook calendar, remember Microsoft Teams now has the same calendar as Outlook. So it is a similar experience, but we are in Outlook. When you add somebody to your calendar, then there's going to be this people's calendars added on the left navigation. And you can see that Mike can now view my calendar. 
Now, this brings up a view that we are going to cover in just a moment. But if we toggle Mike's calendar off, then he can isolate just my calendar view and see exactly what's happening. Now, if we toggle this back on, then we are now in a split view within our calendar. So within my teams, we can also access split view from the drop down here and go split view. So we can see that we have my calendar as well as the Vancouver flagship location calendar. So this allows you to separate the different types of events that you have happening into different calendars while viewing them at the same time. And if you, for example, wanted to toggle on additional items, then we'll see that we now have a three pane view. If you would like me to do another video on all of the different options that we can customize this area on the bottom left navigation, then drop a comment below and let me know. So now if we go to create an event within this calendar and expand it, then this is going to be a familiar experience if we were creating an appointment within Outlook. So here I have added Mike and you'll notice that there are some suggested times at the bottom or if we go to scheduling assistant, then we can actually see mine and Mike's schedules in advance. And so this snapshot here is basically that sharing of your calendar, which shows when people are available or busy. So that setting that's by default allows you to easily organize meetings with your team members. Now, how do we go about adding a meeting to a team's channel? which is what we are all familiar with in Microsoft Teams. I'm just going to discard this. So in that case, we will go up to new event and then we can go channel meeting. You also have some options to do a webinar, a town hall, virtual appointment. But if we go channel meeting, then that will bring us to that familiar experience within Microsoft Teams. I have done some other videos on how you can effectively add meeting notes as well as recreating meeting notes within Microsoft Teams. So you can check those out in my Teams playlist here.